Alberta from Orange County, California. And last week I introduced uh, House Bill 3317, the Coastal Communities Adaption Act. Uh, we're aimed at helping coastal cities and towns brace themselves for climate change uh, related events. And the bill would make federal funds available for communities to help address that. And uh, Ms. Scarlett, the, the question I wanted to ask you in that regard, since you have a, a focus in this area, and I really appreciate the story you, you shared earlier with Seattle, but my guess is we can talk about hundreds of opportunities, thousands of opportunities across the U.S. and, and finding uh, natural ways to address this. Uh, how, two questions there. One, how do you drive the narrative, the dialogue, with the decision makers to look at alter alternative options to man-made uh, outcomes? And second, how would some sort of economic incentives from the federal government help that process along? Uh, first, with respect to motivating decision makers to consider these options, uh, we are a significant science-based organization, and one thing we find with decision makers is the first question of, well, does it work? And so we've invested a lot of research into the actual functionality, for example, of coastal resilience. In fact, we worked with California to uh, look at coastal resilience across the whole uh, coast of, of that state. Uh, so one issue is providing the information, but the other is um, the messenger matters. So we have teamed up with the Association of General Contactors, with um, stormwater managers, uh, with uh, coastal beach managers, those whose role it is to provide that resilience and risk reduction, school them in these opportunities, and then they become the voice. And that, we find, is a good pathway to influencing decision makers. And, and so the second piece of that, because I think you mentioned in the Seattle example that you brought that project in at 25 percent less than what traditional uh, uh, problem solving would have created. That's not always the case. Uh, so economic incentives can help bridge the gap for some municipal municipalities to make the right decision or the best decision. Is that correct? Yeah, I think there are two ways to look at that. On the one hand, not always cheaper, and therefore economic incentives can help, and we applaud anything Congress can do to um, amplify and support investments in natural infrastructure. Um, the other thing, though, as we've worked with the Army Corps of Engineers, is to actually broaden how we think about benefits. So for example, coastal resilience infrastructure often not only yields risk reduction, but improve fisheries and other economic benefits. If you look at the full picture, um, often you come out with a, a very positive economic um, outcome. Thank you. And then Mr. Proctor, and then for, the, for all of you as well, we have a lot of discussion about the public-private partnership opportunities. And I think it's safe to say there are certain um, infrastructure projects that do not rise to a private-public opportunity. Uh, uh, that's really the government's job to address that. Can you talk a little bit about where the cutoff point is or where are those opportunities that, that can be public-private and those that definitely need to be sitting in the public hands? As a member of the private sector, I'd like to think that there's nothing the private sector can't do. Um, but let me say this about P3s. A lot of people, when they think of P3s, they instantly think that you're talking about uh, either consolidation or privatization. That's not necessarily the case. In fact, it's really the exception. There are opportunities for public-to-public -public partnerships that can help small utilities, for example, partner with larger utilities to acquire the level of expertise that they need to have to be able to do things like deploy new technology or better operate their systems or comply with regulations or what have you. Um, so there are a lot of partner opportunities out there that don't get a lot of attention, but that could be uh, important in helping small utilities meet some of the challenges that they have. Uh, also, when you talk about partnerships, there's a whole spectrum of different forms that can take. It can be something as significant, certainly, as consolidation, but it can also be something as uh, much less intrusive, like, for example, a simple co-generation contract with a uh, private uh, uh, partner. Or it could just be a concession agreement, or maybe uh, an agree uh, a savings uh, agreement where 
if a private partner comes in and installs technology that could reduce a utility's cost, then the private partner shares in some of those savings but guarantees a certain level of savings back to those utilities so that they are certain to receive some of the benefits. Um, but there are, all, there are a lot of options there that are not fully exploited. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.